I guess we start off with Shaq, man. What is it about South Carolina? You put up 22 on them in the first game and had 21 tonight, I think. You know, a lot of people have asked me that lately. Somebody literally just before I walked in the door, what you got against, you know, the Gamecocks? There's nothing. I mean, hometown team, I guess. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I ain't really got too much to say about it. Go ahead, Steph. Tell them, obviously, you kind of go through, you know, senior night and all that before the game. I guess, how did you kind of – Handle the emotions that come with that, and what's it like getting a win, you know, at the hump in your last game? Man, it's it's all starting to hit me now. Honestly, I wasn't I wasn't too worried about the senior night before the game because I know how how uh, impactful this game is to our resume, to our to our team. But it's starting to hit me. It's just a surreal feeling to play my last game in the hump. So we'll go to Brian, the coach's left, and then we'll go to Jack, and then John. No, okay. Brian first, yeah, and then Jack, and then John. Shaq, as big as the buckets you were getting in the second half were, taking back-to-back -back offensive fouls, I thought, were, were even more for y'all's momentum. You know, what was going through your mind right there in those two moments where you take those big charges? Uh, just winning plays. Coach stresses the, you know, it's going to come down to the wire, come down to who can make the, the winning play. And I felt like those two plays were the game changer. Sure. Jack, go ahead, second row. This is one of your higher scoring first halves just throughout the conference season. That's not usually the pace that y'all play at. I guess well, how would that first half go for y'all? What were y'all seeing on the offensive end in that first half? You take it? Yeah, I just say uh, Coach Jam was emphasizing attacking the paint. Um, they don't really have a lot of shot blockers. They just got a little, uh, a lot of big bodies. So we just had to attack the paint, um, get fouls, uh, inside out threes, things like that. And that's how we were so productive in the first half. John, go ahead, back on the cameras. Totally, you kind of talked about it earlier with, uh, with Steph's question, but when Coach kind of subbed you out in that last minute and the crowd kind of erupted when, when hearing your name, what, yeah. what was that kind of moment like for you? It was a great feeling, man. I love Starkville from the bottom of my heart. Um, I enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, I enjoy every, all the fans that, that scream my name and, and just come to the games consistently. Uh, and I just love being in the hump. I love everything about Starkville. I'm so appreciative. Go ahead, Steph, and then you Paul. You mentioned you know, how important this game was for y'all's resume. I mean, do you guys feel like at this point you're building some momentum? And, and I guess how excited are you guys you know, about the opportunity again you know, play on Saturday and really kind of clinch a spot you know, in, in the big dance? Uh, yeah, we're really excited. Um, we know what we got to do. We know we got to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, I try not to get into the bra bracketology and stuff like that, but I know we just got to win out. That's all to keep winning. That's all it is. Um, and that's what we're going to keep doing, just keep practicing hard and getting, getting these wins. Shaq, as good as y'all's offense was, obviously South Carolina was matching y'all in the first half, especially in the first, I think, 15, 16, 17 minutes before y'all was run to end the half. Was it, what, what were they just attacking your defense or just hitting unreal shots, or, or what did you think it was? Um, just hitting shots, you know. Uh, you know, Michi, he pulls from deep. Uh, he had a couple threes, you know, from logo area. Um, it's pretty hard to guard, I'm not going to lie, but it's all about just buckling down and, and – Strapping down on defense. Go ahead. So, South Carolina came out hot in both the first and second half, but you guys were able to pull out some big runs to end both of those halves. Just what changed for you guys kind of at the end of both of those halves to allow you guys to have such, um, you know, such offensive success? I feel like it's just our defense. Our defense is going to keep us in the game, every game. Uh, I feel like we got a chance in every game with our defense. And um, we knew the offense was going to come. We just had to keep uh, locking down. and. And make sure they, they make every shot tough. We make every shot tough and every shot contested. And in the end, that's what happened. We get the win. So, Got time for a couple more. We'll go back to the cameras and John, and then we'll go to Steph to wrap it up. Shaq, uh, kind of going off that question, it kind of seemed like in both halves, first half, a little bit of a slow start. And you guys kind of had a lot of momentum going into it. Second half, kind of same thing. South Carolina had a little bit of a lead. And you all ran away with that one. Was there anything kind of said in the huddle? Did you all kind of? You know, talk about like how important the game was to give your guys some energy. What do you think it was to give you that push in both those frames? Uh, just our togetherness. Um, I would say Coach stressed that it's a different team that came in the hump tonight uh, from when we played them a few weeks ago. Um, so it's just all about, you know, strapping in, playing good defense, and, and coming down to the last possession. Tell I know you guys have had, you know, fans in the – Student section, the, the paint squad, the guys in the bananas, and mm -hmm. just all season, it's, it's been solid support from the fans. I guess, what's that meant for you, you know, in your last season to, you know, have that support, see these types of crowds at the home? Man, it's a great feeling. Um, just seeing those guys with the shirts off and the letters on their on their stomachs and stuff. It's funny. I just love, I love it. I enjoy it all of it. Um, 
even the bananas, that was funny too. I just, I enjoyed all of it and I appreciate all those guys for coming out and just being there consistently. That's all it is, just being there consistently and packing the hump. And I hope they keep coming, even when I'm not here. I just hope they keep doing the same thing like they've been doing. Coach, you sat in here yesterday and told us you've seen a lot of crazy things happen on senior nights and talked about the, how interesting it is with trying to balance the emotions and, and, and moving past that, I guess, that kind of played out how you thought it would. <clears throat> Listen, you never know. You can't gauge what's going on in people's minds. If we had that talent, we wouldn't be sitting here. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, that's something you have to ask the players, but um, certainly the game didn't unfold the way we wanted it to. I mean, it was like a glorified pickup game in terms of the offense. I mean, both teams were scoring at will, and that was frustrating, I'm sure, for both coaching staffs. I loved how we were clicking on the offensive end, but we just didn't seem as engaged. Um, we didn't getting into the ball. We weren't dictating. We were getting any deflections. And a lot of that is because how well South Carolina played. I mean, we knew going in that they were a different feeling, looking basketball team than they were seven games ago when we played them in Columbia. We told our guys, we showed our guys that they've gotten better. They've continued to um, improve. They're in better shape. They are guarding better. Um, and you saw it. I mean, they, they are a better basketball team. They're a dangerous basketball team right now. They can beat a lot of teams in our league. A week ago, they had Alabama in overtime, and um, they played well. They played really, really well. And fortunately, there in the second half, our defense finally took hold and got some, some turnovers that turned into offense. Go ahead to Steph and then to Brian. Chris, I guess what, what's it meant to you, you know, these last couple games to, you know, see your guys, you know, be down late in the game, kind of go into a timeout and, really come out and respond and, and pull away from games. It's a good uh, characteristic to have for a basketball team. You know, it's certainly uh, it's something that we've kind of been there, done that now. Um, there's no panic in our, in our huddles, uh, on our bench. These games are long. There's a lot of possessions. A lot of things can happen. Um, you know, when you get those opportunities and you take advantage of them, it just gives you confidence the next time you're in them that, hey, we've been there, done that, we can do this. And we didn't even talk about that kind of stuff. We just talked about, you know, working on guarding this play or that play or what we want to run offensively or what we need to shore up defensively and just kind of stuck with the process and kept grinding away. And then in the end, I really felt just we had four or five defensive possessions that we were really handsy and just Got, got after the ball and really, really changed the tenor of the game. I told Shaq, I thought the sequence that made the biggest difference was when he not only was he making shots, but he drew those back-to-back -back, uh, offensive fouls mm -hmm. uh, in, in those positions. How crucial was that sequence in, in your opinion? Well, we were talking about it in the huddles. Who's going to take a charge? Who's going to take a charge? I don't think we had taken one up until that point, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, we're not one of the teams that takes the most in the country, but we usually take one or two at least a game. And we kept talking about how they're driving in there and playing off one and no one's um, you know, coming over from the help side and sticking their nose in there. And um, they were big plays. I mean, they were huge plays. They were um, daggers, if you will, and um, game changers, if you will. And Shaq's got, gotten better at the knack of timing of doing those, not so much in the paint, but out front. And I've had some guards in the past, and one of them is on my staff that it was really good at that. Um, but it's really nice to see. We'll go second row middle to Jack and then back to the cameras and John. Seems like every game we're talking about the development of uh, Sean Jones. He had some clutch shots for you all tonight. I guess what did you uh, see from him tonight? Yeah, I like talking about that because he keeps getting better and better. He made some huge shots, <clears throat> especially in the first half. Um, and he just – he makes some plays where you go, wow. Like in the first half, he's doing a little curl cut and Shaq threw it to him and threw it way behind him. And I remember it in live going, oh, that's a turnover. And he reached back and grabbed the ball. And then he, he turned and I think he dribbled it once and I think he dropped it off for someone else. But I don't know if there's anyone in our team that could have made that play. Um, if you don't remember it, you have to go back and watch it because it was an incredible display of his length and feel and uh, just instincts. It's like he had magnet in his, in his hands. And um, he just keeps coming and coming. And he's very confident. 
You know, the shot he took there in the second half in front of our bench, I didn't think that was probably the best shot. He's running pretty hard into a transition three, but he's got a lot of confidence in himself. Chris, it seemed like in the first half, South Carolina got off to that better start, and then you all had the momentum the rest of the way. And then kind of the second half, they got back into it, and then you guys ran away with it as well. Was there anything kind of specifically on the back end of both of those halves that you saw your team do, or do you have any specific message that you thought they responded to well at those points? Just keep fighting. You know, it's no no big Newt Rockney speeches, you know, in, in the middle of our huddles and during the game or even halftime. It's just just got to stay together and, and keep fighting. We, we did switch up our offense there the last 10 minutes of the game, and uh, they were, you know, 33 is obviously a physical guy, and we decided to kind of spread the court a little bit more and get Tolu in some ball screens and did an excellent job of, of him and Rams Davis uh, on the side there in front of our bench. Of They were trapping it. You know, when you're on the side, you got like a six defender, and Rams fought off the trap and hit Tolu. And I remember hitting Shaq for a big three, but I think that, you know, really helped our offense to spread them out um, a little bit more. And in the end, I just I really felt, um, you know, their starters played a ton of minutes. If you look at it, most of them played 33, 34, 35 minutes. And I just felt from where I sat that, you know, it just kind of warmed down a little bit. You know, their, their, their passes were just a little bit off, not quite as sharp. And, and our hands kept getting after it. And um, I think that really turned the tide. Back to the front row and Steph and then Paul. Uh, I know you've given a lot of credit, you know, to the crowd throughout the season, but you know, for you being a first-year coach and seeing you know, the sellouts and the attendance, you know, take the jump it did this season. I guess how how important do you feel that is to you know what you're trying to build at Mississippi State moving forward? You know, I don't, I can't speak for them, but hopefully they like how we play. Um, they like the fact that our kids get after it and compete. We're not perfect talked about that before we played any games. We're going to make tons of mistakes, but what I wanted is for people to love the competitiveness of our team and um, you know, try to you know, be a first-class program all the way around. And certainly the product on the floor is, you know, the time for us to be out in front of the public eye. And, um, you know, again, I can't – I don't know why, you know, they've increased or why they keep coming back, but we certainly appreciate it. And it's, it's really helped us. It helped us again tonight. I mean, they were a big reason. Um, you could feel them. You could hear them. You could feel them. And our guys feed off it. And, um, you know, hopefully it's the last time we play in this building this year. You've talked – a lot often and about the, I think, 8 of 10 now. And you said one key has been the offense has steadily gotten better and better. First half, not you had 13 assists. Would you say that was one of the best passing, sharing ball movement halves that you've seen from your <clears throat> Yeah, we had, uh, we scored 42. And I told them at halftime that's probably as big a number that we put up, at least against a really good team. I, I don't know off the top if we've had bigger. <laughs> it's all season. OK, there you go. That's why you're mad. Um, <laughs> but one thing that we had is we had 11 possessions where we had one ball reversal and a paint touch. And that's like our percentage of scoring when we get a ball reversal and a paint touch in the same possession is through the roof. Um, Scott Padgett charts that, and he gets all excited when we get that because usually it's, it's, it's money for us. And we, he goes, that was our most that we've had. Um, all season long, and, and the result was, you know, having 42 points. Go ahead. Uh, Coach, you guys have had a number of gritty wins like this kind of down the stretch. How, you know, how crucial and important are wins like this when you guys are getting prepared for one-and-done situations like the tournament coming up in the SEC, obviously the NCAA tournament that you guys are going to try to get into moving forward? No question. You know, that's what we talked about in the locker room, that, hey, to me, in terms of where we're at in the season, it's like we're in tournament mode. It's survive in advance. You know, they don't draw pictures on the scorecards. Um, you know, we certainly are going to dissect the film, but, you know, we're trying to get better and learn. But at this point in the season, it's all about winning the game. You know, and that's 
me probably needs to remember that more than anyone else because as the coach you get frustrated at times when your teams don't play as well as you want them to play and um, you know that's always been an issue for me but it, as you get older you understand that when you're coming down the stretch is you just got to get the W's you just got to string them together and when you get into the tournament type format it's it doesn't matter you just got to find ways to win and um, you got to have some grit to you if you're going to win tough games if you're going to win from behind and our kids have developed that over the season got time for a couple more we'll go to Steph and then John I know when when you guys were struggling last month you talked a lot about you know kind of just just needing that breakthrough and you know you guys got it against TCU but you know it'd be really easy to you know have a letdown or, or struggle again after that what is it about this team that when you did have that moment you were able to keep it going and keep the momentum you know rolling instead of having a letdown like today could have been an easy letdown for a lot of teams <clears throat> I think a lot of coaches say this but just the vibe I feel when I walk in and they don't know I'm here, um, or I walk down the stairs and they can't see me of the arena before practice is they really like each other. They've got a real good vibe. Uh, the camaraderie amongst our players is at a high level, and um, that always helps. You know, you kind of keep your fingers crossed when it comes to that subject matter. And um, having really good kids certainly makes a difference. And I've said that all year long, that the quality of people that we have um, in our locker room is, is off the chart. And I think that makes a big difference as well. And we got some older guys that, let's be real, they haven't played in uh, March Madness. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a realistic goal for them now. And there's a lot of basketball to be played you know, before we're at that point. But we've talked about it enough, and, and they feel it. They're hungry for it. And I think that's, you know, been a big goal for him and has kept him uh, fighting, you know, every day. John, wrap us up in the back. As someone who expressed to us the other day how much gratitude you had for Tolu Smith that he chose to, you know, come back and that you knew you all had a chance because you had him, to be able to see him get that moment when you subbed him out with under a minute to go and <laughs> the whole crowd go crazy for him, as someone that knows him, more than any of us knows how hard he works. How good did that feel to see him be able to get that moment? I'm certainly at this point, uh, hindsight, glad that it happened. But I almost, not almost, I was kicking myself a little bit that I went too early. I mean, it's not like I haven't been there, done that. I should know better. Um, you know, but it worked out fine, and it was great. But there was a couple possessions there where I'm like, God, I went too early, and I was upset at myself in the coach's locker room um, after the game, but it all worked out. Um, so, yeah, it was awesome. You know, it was awesome for, for the fans to be able to, you know, give him one last, you know, round of applause and for him to acknowledge him, and not just Tolu, but, you know, the other guys that were out there with him. You know, Eric had already been subbed out, but um, DJ Jeffries and um, who else? Who's the other seater? Huh? Cam? Yeah, no, it wasn't Cameron. No. Oh, it was. Yeah, Cameron was out there, but he's obviously not a senior. Um, but it was cool. I mean, I think, you know, if you get that opportunity in your last home game and as a coach, you can take advantage of it. You need to do that. Um, it's something they'll probably remember, and I'm sure the family will remember. So it was a cool moment for, for all those guys.